<clears throat> so you guys have heard of Funkmaster Flex, right? But have you heard of Donkmaster Tron? That's right, we got another one here. Uh, truth be told, not really sure how this happened, but yet again, working on another donk. This one, technically not a donk, it's an Oldsmobile. Uh, I'm not really sure what year. Uh, if I had to guess, 75 maybe? But, man, it is big. So these are 32s, and normally I don't like to use this word, but these are 32 inch rims. <laughs> and here's the best part. You ready? That's right. 32 inch spinners. It's 2005 all over again. Uh, so the plan for this thing, or what they want done with it, because definitely not mine, but the plan for this thing is they want uh, an LS swapped into it. Decent cam, something they can street drive it. They're not trying to make a thousand horsepower. Holly High Ram, Terminator X, Turbo 400. Um, right now, it has the old Rocket 350 in it and a Turbo 350. And they want an LS swapped because they couldn't get it running, or at least that was part of the reason that I was told, at least, is that they just couldn't get it running. So, for Poops and chuckles, we're gonna see if we can get this thing running. And I say we, cause Papatron is on his way over. Uh, just, it was his idea to try and get it running. I was gonna just start gutting it immediately to try and get it done and out of here, but he was like, I kinda wanna see if I can get that thing fired up. And I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, it's in there, it's complete. It's really pretty clean aside from the stereo wires. Like, I mean, Clean as in factory, mostly untouched, is what I mean by that. This thing's still going. Those are some good bearings, Jesus. It's got vacuum lines and stuff everywhere, but it's factory fresh. The interior's really not too bad. I haven't lifted the car up yet. Basically just unloaded off the trailer, pushed it in here, and here we are. Uh, overall, it looks like a pretty decent car. It looks fairly straight. We're gonna see if, this fucking wheel. We're gonna see if we can get it fired up. And I don't know. Hear how it sounds. And then start gutting it. Now, unlike the last one, this guy said that there's no real time limit on it. Which is nice, because there's no rushing to find parts, getting the wrong parts, things like that which always sucks. So I'll be able to rip the engine out, rip the transmission out. It'll need a new drive shaft probably. I'll be able to use the stock fuel line as the return and I'll run another feed line. I'll probably just use a Walbro 255 pump just in line, something that I can suck out of the tank. Uh, I'll probably just keep it simple on the motor mounts and use the ICT billet adapter plates. Radiator should work just fine. The stock truck hose will work uh, from like a 5.3 or 6.0 or something. The lower hose, uh, I can probably use the same one that I used on the blue Camaro that I did. You know, this one might work. You can see where it loops up there. That one might work, because we got a whole lot more room in here. On the Camaro, it was pushed a lot closer to the radiator. I might keep the clutch fan on it, instead of doing an electric fan. Personally, I'm much more of a fan of, pun intended, I'm much more of a fan of the clutch fan setups, because it's, it's one less thing to go wrong. With electric fans, you got the wiring, the relays, the fans themselves could burn the motor up. If it's something that you just want to cruise, and you're not worried about space, fitment, and aren't oh, those kind of the same thing? If you're not worried about space or the like 10 horsepower that it costs you to run a clutch fan, then just run a clutch fan. And they're always on, you don't have to deal with toggle switches or the tune, anything like that. So I looked under here briefly when pushing it in, and you can see where they modified the control arm. It looks like an aftermarket spindle too. Upper control arm, I'm sure is aftermarket. 
Maybe able to see there, it's all tubular. I don't know what market they were after, but they were after it. I'm not sure what they did for the rear here. Uh, huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> so they have some sort of long arm kit on it. <laughs> and it looks like their buddy's uncle's cousin used to be a welder back in the day. It'll hold, you know. <laughs> It'll. It's fine, dude. A oh, little, little pokey in the floor. A little pokey through. Uh. Is that drive shaft? Is that drive shaft hitting the floor? Well, it's not hitting the floor, but you can see where it has been hitting the floor. Wow. Yeah, you can see the witness marks on the drive shaft and where it's shiny up on the floor. Oh boy. I hope that doesn't become my problem. Yeah, that is not bueno. No bueno. Mm. It's muy no bueno. So as soon as Pops gets here, we'll uh, start checking things. I don't want him to feel left out, so I'm going to wait for him, you know? And uh, actually, I just don't have a whole lot of ambition lately. My, my winter seasonal depression's kicking in a month early this year, which is great. But he should be here soon, and then we'll see if we can get this thing fired up. Odds are it's something real stupid. You know, I've had it on the charger for a while. Let's just see what it does. Oh, God. All right, I got this thing rolled forward so I can actually get in it now which was a chore in and of itself. God, this thing's so fucking high. All right, let's... Hmm. That's annoying. All right, let's see what she'd do. Huh. All right, so is the battery junk? I've had it on the charger for a while, but if the battery's junk, that's not gonna matter. You know, it could like take charge and have charge there, but as soon as it sees load, it's just So, that's what these are for. This is a battery tester. You can do the same thing with a multimeter, but this is, you know, easier to read. And they're fairly cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks. If you have a lot of dead batteries, it's definitely worth it. Alright, so there's what it's resting at. 12.2-ish. Then push this to simulate load. Alright, now the battery's good. It's only dropping to 10.8 or so. Sounds like Pops is here. All right, so doesn't crank. I just checked the battery. It's charged and it doesn't drop down much under load. It doesn't want to turn over? It doesn't even sound like it's trying to engage the starter. Hmm. So it could be broken wire, bad starter, not connected. I don't know. I'm gonna figure we can push it back and lift it up. Yeah. Starter's been hit. Yep. <laughs> All right, the rear end came down a lot because it was. I probably couldn't get my finger between them earlier. Yeah, the fucker's been hitting big time. Mm hmm. Why did they chop this frame to put these tires on? That's fairly common. Look at the bump stops. I didn't even look to see if it was just sitting on the bump stops. Probably was though. 
Because that one's crushed in pretty good. That one's shiny pretty good. Yeah, like the top of the bump stop, you can feel the indent of that. Yeah. I'm sure this thing rides like a dream. The other one didn't ride too bad. All right, so we got the starter dropped out of it. And when you arc across it, normally it'll roll the starter over. But instead of doing that, it's making some relay or something up in the car very unhappy. Okay, now let's see. see what it does. We put a pry bar on the flywheel, rolled the engine over so we know that's not seized up. We turned the starter a little bit. Whatever it is was up there making that whining noise. I mean, because if the motor fucking ran good, why would he be changing it? Well, they couldn't get it started. Actually, mm. bolt this bitch back up. Yeah, bolt it up, drop it down, and check things out up there. Find the source of the whining. Yeah. Because the engine's going to come out anyway. It's just, they couldn't get it started, so it'd be cool. Just a little piece of pride knowing we could. It's the challenge. You know, I'll try it again. Or did it like stop cranking it up? It stopped on its own. Oh, damn it. Right before I turned the camera on, he went oh. in, hit the key, and it started rolling over now. So the old R&R &R did the trick there. The gear selector? It's in the, yeah, up here. Hopefully it's neutral. It almost fired up. Yeah. Would this have a neutral safety switch? I wouldn't think so. What? I'm just thinking out loud on whether or not a car this old would have like a neutral safety switch. Unless the uh, wiring underneath that go into the steering columns loose. You can hear a relay. Alright, we just headed up to do some more testing. And we uh, put a light tester on the starter wire. Or like the wire from the key. And it kicks on and then kicks right back off. So. An LS swap isn't going to fix that, so we got to trace the wiring and see what's going on. Um, uh, thinking it might be that relay that we're hearing. Yeah, wherever it is. Now we're going to have to roll the car forward so we can look under the dash. Alright, hopefully we got it. Well, at least I know it's wired it. Yeah. We got that. This thing's going to start right up and purr like a kitten. It'd be nice for whoever ends up with this engine. Let's see if it even rolls. Ugh, you bitch. Razor knife and some heavy wire. Alright. Keys on. About to jump it. No, didn't think there was. It runs smooth. It ran smooth. Hell yeah. It's quiet. Okay, that's what it is. Just, Just wiring to the starter. All right, let's start gutting it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought they were just pulling out because the motor don't fucking work. No, they couldn't get it running. So they're like, well, let's LS swap it. It's a shame, really. Yeah, it's like, hey, uh... Well, the dang thing runs so good. That engine is so smooth, it just, it freaking purred, dude. It's such a shame that it has to come out. I tried to talk old dude out of it, saying, you don't want an LS in this thing. 
it's original when you pop the hood it looks good if you want I mean for what you're trying to do all you need is a good cam a good muffler and let's put like sniper EFI or something on it or like the Holly setup where it looks like a 750 Holly you know what I mean but nope the answer is LS <laughs> which in this case I'm I'm against to be honest I think this thing with just a nice cam that sounded good. To be honest, I hate the thumper cams, but something like the thumper cam, I don't think that would work well with, any, with a throttle body EFI because all the overlap and stuff, it'd probably get a poor vacuum signal. But just something that sounds good can spin the tires, a good muffler, and that fuel injection system. Figure out, figure out where the actual issue in the wiring is, and it would be perfect. You could keep your old school air conditioning. Everything looks good. It looks copacetic. Oh, I hope this build doesn't take too long. Because winter's coming up and I'm going to need my garage space. So that's going to do it for today's video. Big shout out to Papatron. Like I consider myself pretty decent with wiring. But when it comes to troubleshooting and tracing things down, he's just he's on it. So that's why I kind of just stayed back and stayed out of his way this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. It's not going to be all strictly donk content. It's going to be hopefully more on just the LS swap side of things. So if you're not into donks, you're still going to enjoy the videos. So stay tuned. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time. Bye.